Hi, and welcome to this demo of Border Zero. In this video, I'll show you how to sign up for Border Zero and some suggestions for how to get started. We'll start at the beginning. Signing up is easy. We'll start by going to the website and click on the top right button to sign up. From there, I'll use my Google account to sign up. Next, we have to accept the terms of agreement and provide a little bit of information about what we're intending to use Border Zero for. I would like to use it to make available SSH, HTTPS, and database resources. So I will submit that. Next up, we need to give our organization a name. In this case, the name of the organization that I'm choosing is called Onboarding. In this window, we see various deployment options. I recommend starting with the Playground option, as that's the easiest to get going with. Border Zero is now spinning up a connector for us, and it will add various resources such as a MySQL database, a Postgres database, a web server, and an SSH server for us. So this will make it super easy for us to get going and start exploring the value of Border Zero. Now all of these resources have spun up, and here you can see that my playground is ready, and I can now connect to some of the example demo resources. I'll connect to an SSH resource. As you can see, we're being asked again to authenticate. In this case, I'll use my Google single sign-on credentials. And now, as you can see, I have access to this Border Zero connector using just my browser and single sign-on. Notice that I was never asked for any systems credentials, so Border Zero is facilitating all of that and provides us with a passwordless experience to this Linux server. All right, that was pretty smooth, so let's close this, and we're now being congratulated. We have finished the onboarding visit. We have created some testing resources, a connector, and we logged into our first server. So now let's go to the dashboard, and from there on, we can see, for example, all the recent sessions. I will click on See All, and I can see the SSH session that we have just created. Notice how we can immediately watch back this session, and we can see exactly what happened during this session. We now know what single sign-on identity logged into what server and what commands were being executed by that user. This provides you, as the administrator, with incredible amount of visibility. Next up, let's go back to the Sockets Overview page and explore some more. By the way, in Border Zero, we call the service you make available through Border Zero Sockets. So from here, we can see again all of the other Sockets available in our playground. Let's connect to the MySQL resource. We're now in the web-based database client. We're being asked to select the right database schema and can now see all the tables in this database. We can easily explore the various tables and see the table layout. So again, notice how easy it is to access this database server and notice that at no point we were being asked for credentials again, a fully passwordless experience allowing us to eliminate shared credentials. Now let's browse back to the session log page. We can now see another session here. This is the database session that we just created. By clicking on Replay Session, we can see the session details and see exactly what queries were being executed while we were in that database. From here, you can see the various select, show, and describe database queries that we just executed. Again, giving you as the administrator lots of detailed visibility on what's happening in your infrastructure. We've now finished the first part. Within just a few minutes, we've made available some demo resources, accessed it with my single sign-on credentials, and reviewed the session recordings. That was pretty easy, so time for the next step. Next up, we're going to install the Border Zero connector on a Linux VM in my own environment, and I'll make it available through Border Zero. You'll see that installing a connector and registering it is super easy. I'll simply follow the getting started instructions as documented on docs.borderzero.com. The first thing I need to do is install the connector. First, we'll download it, and then I'll install it using the command border zero connector install, which will install a systemd service, create a token for me, and register the connector with the border zero cloud. And that's it. As you can see here, the demo VM we're using has now registered itself as a connector, and this whole process took about 10 seconds. Now, with a single click, we can access this connector VM and manage it using just my single sign-on credentials. Going forward, this connector will act as a bridge between your private servers and your users. And because the connector sets up an encrypted outbound tunnel, it will continue to work fine even if it's running behind NAT, making it an ideal VPN and access management solution. Now let's say we have some more servers running in this data center, and we'll use this connector to make those services available as Border Zero sockets. Simply click on Add New Socket and select the service type you'd like to add. 
as you can see, we support all of the common infrastructure services, including the various database servers, integration with popular AWS services, containers, Kubernetes, HTTP, SSH, or any generic TCP service. Let's make a MySQL server available. I'll select I'm just experimenting, which simply means that we will pre-populate some of the fields so that you can use a test server that we operate for you that you can use to experiment with. If you have your own server, simply make sure that you provide the correct upstream configuration and that's it. You've now made another MySQL server available through your new connector. That was simple. Let's add one more. In this case, I'll use an HTTP server. Again, I'll select I'm just experimenting, which means some of the fields are pre-populated with a test server that we provide for you to get started with. All right, I think you got the hang of it. I think now might be a good time to talk about policies. Policies are what allows you as the administrator to control who, meaning what single sign-on identity, has access to what resources and under what conditions. Here you can see the policy that was created when we created our organization. By default, only the administrator single sign-on identity is added to the policy, but you can edit this policy and add and remove identities, countries, IP ranges, time of day and date filters. You can even integrate with third-party APIs such as PagerDuty or your own internal APIs, allowing you to define super fine-grained access rules going far beyond your typical firewall capability. So far, we've created two connectors and made available various servers as Border Zero sockets. This blue button at the top brings us to the client portal. This is the link you would share with your engineering team, your coworkers, or contractors. It will ask the user to log in with their single sign-on credentials and shows them exactly what they have access to. So this is a great way to discover all the services you have access to and provides you with a web-based client to access all of these services, whether these are SSH, container, or any of the database services. And all of this without the need for a VPN, using just your single sign-on credentials and providing a passwordless experience. Different users prefer different ways to access their servers. So in addition to this web portal, we also have a desktop application that allows users to discover and access the servers they need access to. Many engineers prefer the CLI. So let's take a look at what the CLI experience is like with Border Zero. First, I have to log in. I can do that like this. Next up, I can list all the database servers I have access to. Select one of the databases, and then I'm being asked what my favorite database tool is. This makes sure we seamlessly integrate with the engineer's preferred workflow. Similarly, we can ask for all the shell servers or containers we have access to, and use the CLI to access the container or server I need to manage. As you're going through this onboarding, you may see some notification emails like these come in. These notifications are part of the default notification settings in your account. To modify this, go to Organization Settings and select Notifications. Here you can modify the notification profiles. For example, this is where you can configure the type of notifications, the email addresses, or your integration with Slack. We covered a lot in this video so far, and you now have a good idea of how to get started with Border Zero. As you can see, it's super easy for engineers to discover and access all the resources they have access to. No more need for shared credentials, jump host, VPNs, or other complicated setups. And for you as the administrator, it's also easy to set up. And you now have detailed access control capabilities and visibility, allowing you to easily control who should have access to what resources under what conditions. And you can see who is accessing what, and when they do, the ability to know what's happening. There's plenty more to explore, so I recommend checking out our documentation on docs.borderzero.com, our blog, and our YouTube channel. Finally, make sure to join our Slack, where you can chat directly with the Border Zero team for any questions that may arise, and we look forward to help you on your Zero Trust journey.